Now we're going to learn how to multiply decimals by 10. But first, let's think about multiplying whole numbers by 10. So our first question is 2 times 10. We know that the answer is 20, and you might have been told that if you're multiplying a whole number by 10, you can just put a zero on the end. That works for whole numbers, but it doesn't work for decimals. So let's do 2 times 10 but let's use the method that we're going to use to multiply decimals. So we can write out our number, and because 2 is a whole number, we can put our decimal point on the end. We copy down the decimal point, and we're multiplying, which means our number is going to get larger, because if you multiply by any number larger than 1, your answer always gets bigger. And in 10, we have one zero, so we're going to move the digit one square to the left. So if we copy down this two, one square to the left, we now have an empty square before the decimal point. But we know that the digit before the decimal point has to be the ones digit. So we need to write a zero in this empty square to show that the two is now two tens. So now, we have the decimal point on the end of 20, so our answer is 20. Now, let's use the same method to multiply 0.2 by 10. So we can write out the decimal 0.2 and copy down the decimal point. Now we're multiplying by 10, which means the digits are going to move one square to the left. So if we copy down this 0, one square to the left, and do the same with this 2, we now have 0, 2, and if the decimal point is on the end, we have a whole number, so our answer is 2. So notice, when we had two ones times 10, we got two tenths as our answer, and then when we multiplied two tenths by 10, we got two ones as our answer. So what's 0 0.8 times 10? We can write out the decimal, copy down the decimal point. We're multiplying by 10, so the digits are going to move one square to the left. So if we copy down this 0 and this 8, one square to the left, we now have the decimal point at the end, so we have a whole number. That's 8. Now for 1.6 times 10, we can write out 1.6, copy down the decimal point, and we're multiplying by 10, so we can move the digits one square to the left. Now the decimal point is at the end, so we have a whole number. That's 16. For 60.1 times 10, we can write out the number, copy down the decimal point, and again, we're multiplying, so digits are moving to the left, and there's one zero in the number 10, so the digits need to be copied down one square to the left. When we do that, we get the decimal point at the end, so we have a whole number as our answer. That's 601. So what's 24.6 times 10? We write the number out, copy down the decimal point, and to multiply by 10, we're moving the digits one square to the left. Now the decimal point is at the end, so we have 246 as our answer. So let's look at this question in a bit more detail. 0 0.2 times 10. We know that multiplication can be thought of as repeated addition. So let's add 0 0.2 or 2 tenths 10 times. We've got our rectangles split up into tenths. So if we colour in two tenths, that's one lot of 0 0.2. When we multiply by two, we're colouring in another two tenths, times three, times four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So because we've added 0 0.2 ten times, we now have two whole rectangles coloured in so our answer is two holes. We could also count using place value counters. So there's two tenths, which is the same as 0 0.2. So 
So if we copy this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, we now have twenty tenths. But remember, we can join ten of these tenths together to make one whole, and then we have another ten tenths which can make another whole. So that's two ones or two as our answer. Now let's look at 0 0.8 times 10. But this time, instead of adding 8 tenths, we can think of multiplication as making things 10 times bigger. What we can do is split up those 8 tenths into 8 different rectangles. And remember, one way of thinking about multiplying by 10 is making things 10 times bigger. So if we make our tenths 10 times bigger, We've now got holes. We've got eight whole rectangles, so our answer is eight. We could also use place value counters. 0 0.8 is eight tenths, and if we're multiplying by ten, we can have ten rows of eight tenths. But remember, when you've got ten of something, you can exchange it for one place value counter to the left. So we have eighty tenths, but we can join these into eight ones, giving us eight as our answer. 